obviously the first person with the Neuralink implant. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna sound kind of crazy, but it makes being paralyzed really not that bad. Just thinking about someone, say, breaking their neck or dislocating their neck, going into a hospital, and two days later, like getting surgery, getting an implant, something, two days later, walking out, like that is just, it's such a real possibility now. And that it makes me like so happy that other people don't have to go through this. It's everything I could have ever asked for and to be a part of it and to be helping in some way, to be able to be useful in some way, it, it completely changed how I live. I'm waking up at six, seven in the morning, just excited for the next day. And that's something that I never thought would happen to me ever again. It's more than I could ever ask for. So thank you guys. Thank you so much. If you don't cry when you watch that, you're probably a sociopath. Damn, I can hear the comment section now. Anyways, that was wild, right? I mean, just imagine a future where we can help every person with a disability regain normal function in their body. Hold up, I didn't realize. And it's not just about helping disabled people regain normal functions, but it's also about improving the current human body with something called BCIs. BCI stands for Brain Computer Interface. It's a technology that allows us to interact with other technologies without having to physically manipulate them. Meaning the technology that you've seen in sci-fi movies is becoming real. BCIs can be invasive or non-invasive. An invasive BCI is going to be surgically implanted into your brain versus non-invasive, which uses external sensors. The most popular company currently developing BCIs is Neuralink by Elon Musk, but there are a lot of other companies that are working on this technology. Neurable is creating non-invasive BCIs for gaming and VR. They want to allow users to control devices and interact with virtual environments using just their thoughts. Kernel is using invasive and non-invasive BCIs to develop really advanced neural interfaces to enhance human cognition and even treat neurological disorders. So they're aiming to improve memory, intelligence, and overall brain function. There's one called Control Labs, which was actually acquired by Meta in 2019. It uses non-invasive wristbands to interpret neural signals which helps users control digital devices in virtual environments with natural hand movements. Synchron has created an invasive BCI called Stintrode, which is designed to help restore communication and control for individuals with paralysis. And they're pretty cool because Stintrode is actually implanted in blood vessels near the brain versus needing open brain surgery. And Emotive creates non-invasive headsets for consumer research. These aren't the only companies creating BCIs. This is a section of technology that is primed to absolutely explode. One of the things that's incredibly fascinating about BCIs is the inner intersection between that technology and robotics. So currently, whenever someone loses an appendage to a sickness, they might get a replacement, like a fake arm or fake leg just popped back on there. However, with BCIs and robotics, we could replace these appendages with robotic arms or legs, and people would actually be able to control them. So this creates a future where not only can we restore movement to the people who have been disabled, we can actually enhance the physical capabilities of human beings. And the crazy thing is, this technology isn't even that far off. Like, I'm talking within five years. We may all be ballin' as cyborgs, and I'm very excited. Now, on this channel, I'm not just trying to sell you this, like, hyper-positive utopian vision of the future. I do think that every technology has its own set of problems that need to be solved, and love exploring the ethical dilemmas of each technology, so let's talk about that when it comes to BCIs. One of the most fascinating issues surrounding BCIs is identity. So BCIs can obviously dramatically enhance our cognitive abilities, memory, even physical capabilities. And this could really improve our lives, but it also raises concerns about what does it really mean to be human? Are you still you if you replace all of your body parts with robotics? Agency is also a huge concern. Like, will you always be in control of your BCI? Or will the company that implanted it be able to take you over at some point? 
<laughs> That's horrifying. There's also an issue with equity and access. Like right now, a lot of this incredible technology and biological advances are really only available to people who have a lot of money. If you're not rich and you need a leg replacement, are you going to be able to afford it? Are disabled people going to go into debt for the rest of their lives in order to get a BCI implanted so that they can regain control of their bodies? Consent is another issue. We don't know the full extent of how BCIs will work. And this means that people who may get BCIs may not be able to give their fully informed consent to using the technology. I'm an optimist, so I always say I would much rather present a positive view and be wrong than a negative view and be right. However, I'm also very pragmatic and understand the potential implications of all of these technologies. It does feel like a future that includes BCIs will be dramatically positive for the human race. Many scientists even believe that within our lifetimes, we could create everything that the human body needs to extend our healthy lifespan. If you're just a brain inside of a robotic exoskeleton and all of your organs have been grown in a lab, you could essentially live forever, right? When an organ fails, you just have the lab grow a new one. When a leg gives out, you just buy a new one. Now imagine if you layer artificial intelligence on top of this technology. It's kind of blowing my mind right now, like I'm getting goosebumps. LLMs might actually come into play here. You might be able to use LLMs with your robot body in the future. <laughs> so go and check out this video. I'll see you over there. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Like this is really a movie at this point, right? Are we living in a simulation? We are, right?